Hey, it's Mars, and this is Let's Make a Dungeon Crawler Part 2. In this video, we'll be making our first player. I'm going to start out by right-clicking in the hierarchy and creating a 3D plane so we have something to walk on. And I'll set its position back to 0, 0, 0, and then press F to center onto it. And we want our ground to be set as static so that we can build a nav mesh on it, and we'll get to that in a moment. And we'll set it to layer floor so that left clicking on it will tell our player to move there. Now we'll need a character to use. So I'm going to recommend we all start with, if you're following along, that we all start with the sci fi officer captain, which is made by All Star Characters. I'll put a link in the description if you'd like to try him out. He doesn't fit with our medieval theme, however he is free and he does come with a lot of animations. So we'll be using this guy. He comes with a lot of stuff on him right now, so I'm going to click on his face twice and that will open up the game object to his children here and he comes with 11 heads, so I'll grab all of them and turn 10 of them off with Alt-Shift-A. Comes with quite a bit of hair. So I'll turn them all off except for one. Comes with a bunch of shields, so I'll click twice. And we'll turn off these guys. And then the same for his right hand. Turn off these game objects. So now we're ready to start adding components to our player. So I'll go back to the parent. And notice the text is in blue. That's because this is a prefab that we downloaded in the character pack. So I'm going to go to game object, break prefab instance. Now he's just a regular game object. And I'm going to name him, let's say warrior. And I'll drag this game object into my project window to create my own prefab. Now let's start adding components. We're going to do a play game, character, player, top down nav controller. We'll be using a nav mesh agent to move around. And like I said, we'll get to that in a moment. Let's also add a play game, character, animation. And we're not using legacy, we're using mechanim. So we'll add a basic mechanim control script. And if we open that up, we see that it wants an animator. So we'll add that now, add component, miscellaneous, animator, and I'll drop that right into my basic mechanism control script here. Let's also add a play game item system equipment slots so we can equip items later and also a play game item system item bag so we can pick stuff up and lastly we want to control our camera so we'll go to add component play game camera top-down camera and we'll want to make a few changes before we hit play and test this guy out. Let's change our Y offset to 17.5, our Z offset to negative 12.5, and our tilt to 53, 53, 53. And our zoom will be 15 and 15. And we'll take a closer look at that when we hit play and see what all of this does. And last but not least, let's go to our player top-down nav controller and enable hold move allowed so that we can click once and then drag around to walk. Now, like I said, we're using a nav mesh agent to move. So that lets us move anywhere where we've built a nav mesh. So I'm also going to add a right, I'm going to right click 3D cube just so we have something to walk around and I'll also make sure that's set to static so that we can build a nav mesh around it. And I'm going to go to Window, Navigation, and hit the Build button, the Bake button on the bottom right. And our nav mesh, nav mesh agent component will allow us to move, if I go back to the Navigation tab, anywhere that's blue. So you'll see, since I marked this cube as static, we're not allowed to walk through it. Now before we hit play, we need to go to play game and set up our attributes and our class. So let's go to the attributes and we, we can see that we need health and experience. So let's add those now. 
I'll add two attributes and I'll call this one health and this one experience and I'll choose those from the drop down and let's give ourselves a class uh, I believe this one was warrior for our starting class and I'll add all and let's give ourselves 100 health and I'll check this grows with level checkbox for now and if we click on this slope we can see that when we hit level 2 our health will jump up to 118 when we hit level 3 it'll jump up to 136 so we'll leave that just as it is for now and then for the experience our slope is up here for this series we're going to use a max level of 80 and then a max experience of 800 million and now if I click on the slope we can see that level 2 requires tons of experience and that's because our slope is set to linear so I'll actually change that to Quartic and now it's a much more reasonable scale we only need 20 experience to get to level 2 or 328 experience to get to level 3 so that's much more reasonable and we'll leave that there for now and I'll go ahead and add a faction I don't know that we need it yet but it couldn't hurt so I'll hit the plus button and let's just call this the player faction and then let's make sure that our class and faction are assigned to the player we just created so in our actor component let's make sure we're set to we're set to warrior and our faction will choose the player faction and that should be good also I'm going to go to my lighting tab and change it from ambient source skybox to color because my shadows were pitch black there for a second and then I'm going to turn my directional light down just a bit. We also want to change our field of view on our camera to 20. So let's hit play and see what uh, what happens. So in our player, in our top-down camera component, we chose a tilt of 53. So since we're trying to mimic the Diablo isometric style camera, I looked online and I did a lot of research on which camera angle we should, which exact tilt of our camera we should be using. And I found a few interesting numbers. The numbers out there were 35.264, 40, 45, 53.1301, and 56.37001 so I just decided to go with 53 as it looks pretty good and then if we have while we're building the rest of our game if we find that this angle doesn't work for us you can tweak the the values of your tilt then and then you'll also want to experiment with a good Y offset of how high your camera is and then a good Z offset with how forward or backward your camera is but I decided to go with 17.5 negative 12.5 and 53 and then of course your zoom I would say our goal is to get as far away from the player as possible so that we can see as much as possible however the further you zoom out the more anti-aliasing you're gonna get the the more you'll have to increase your shadow distance so as a rule of thumb I try to zoom out as far as possible while trying not to lose any detail or quality. I'm going to click on pause, go to my game screen, maximize on play and unpause. So this looks alright. This will work for now. Now let's set up our animations before we end this video as we're sliding around. And you'll notice that um, I can't walk through this queue. My player navigates to the other side of it as that's where our nav mesh has been baked so let's get to the animations if I go to my basic mechanism control script you'll see that it comes with a few parameters and that it's linked to our animator controller so let's open up my animator 
and we're missing a controller and we're missing an avatar. So our avatar tells our animations which bones or which skeleton to animate. So we want to find our player's avatar. So I'll go to the model, our player model, and I'll use this base mail avatar and drag that into my animator component. And now we need a controller. This is where we put all of our animations. So I will right click, create, animator controller. And I'll just name this player animator. And let's drop this into the player's animator component. Now if I double click on this, we get our mechanism window. And it has a bit of a steep learning curve. It can be intimidating at first, but it's actually really easy to use. So before we start dragging animations in, we want to add our parameters. So let's go back to my player, and we'll see that the basic mechanism control script comes with speed, forward, left, right, jump, ground, on death, and dead. So we'll add those now. I'll hit the plus button. Actually, let me go to my player and hit the padlock at the top right of my inspector so that when I click away, it doesn't get deselected. And we'll add a parameter float for speed. I'll add another float for forward. I'll add another float for left, right. We'll add another float for jump. Grounded is a bool, so I'll add a bool grounded. On death is a trigger, we'll add that trigger on death. And lastly, dead is a bool, so I'll add my final bool dead. So now that our animator is set up, let's link in, let's drop in some animations. So I'll go to my all star character folder. And the nice thing about top-down dungeon crawler games is we really only need three animations. Standing still, running forward, and attacking. At the, at a, as a bare minimum, that's all we're going to need. So let's grab a one-hand idle and a one-hand run. So when we move in Unity, the NavMesh agent stores how fast we're moving in this speed value. And then our basic mechanism control script pulls the speed from our nav mesh agent component into the script itself, into its speed parameter and its forward parameter. And then lastly, it feeds those values into our animator controller parameters. So as we move our player around, these floats will increase. So we will use these two floats mostly speed, to change between idling and running. So I'll right click on idle, make transition, and then I'll click on run. And if I click on this arrow, I'll click this padlock to unlock my inspector here. And we need a condition to move through this arrow, through this transition. So I'll hit the plus, and we want to say speed is greater than 0.1 and then I'll turn off has exit time. Exit time basically means does this animation need to finish before we can travel down the arrow, down the path, and we don't want to finish idling. We want to immediately move if the conditions are met, which is speed greater than 0.1. And then same for running back to idle, I'll right click make transition and then the condition is speed is less than 0.1 and once again I'll turn off has exit time. So let's see if it works. That's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching and if you learned something hit that like button. Join me next time or we'll be setting up our interface.